I guess it was about five this morning. I just heard shots ringing from everywhere. It sounded like a war zone around here. And I'm and I'm looking and I don't know, I didn't even know which way to go because I didn't know which way the bullet was coming from. Neighbors replay the scene out of East Macon at the Davis Homes housing community on Leaf Street, where a double shooting in the early morning hours has claimed the life of 18-year-old Shondrika Adams of Macon. The shooting also leaves a 16-year-old male victim recovering from a gunshot wound to the leg. It's just ridiculous. 18 years old, don't even don't even know what life is about. It's sad. It's just sad. Sheriff's investigators say the two teens were sitting outside in front of an apartment in this Jeep when it all unfolded. A street scattered with bullet casings. Neighbors say this has become all too familiar. Well, gunshots have uh, gotten kind of regular around here. But other than that, we used to be a quiet neighborhood. Investigators worked the scene for hours, and as the sun rose over East Macon, from just one block away, there came a sound of hope for a better tomorrow. Wilbur Johnson says he lost a student of his own just over two weeks ago in Macon to gun violence. He says he plays his trumpet to share a reminder. Maybe to remind us that there's something else. You know, there is a guy, and we need him. And we need a bat. You don't want to see your babies destroyed in the streets like this. Man. Something has to happen. Man. Investigators have made no arrest in the shooting, which now marks Macon's 16th homicide in just five months. Neighbors say there's no fear, just faith. And I still feel safe because God is my protecting shield. We've survived everything else, and we will survive this too. But we've got to reevaluate our approach. And he's making Tavoris Jones, WGXA News. Oh, wait till the sun shines, Nelly, when the clouds go drifting. Looking good! Hello. You got a good shape All eyes and cell phones were on the heads of some of Navis Health's now baldest employees. Uh, I think it's some kind of like kindness because they don't have to do it, but they're willing to do it for other kids and to feel more confident about themselves. The fifth annual Go Bald or Go Home charity event helps patients like Helvin, who was diagnosed this summer with leukemia, deal with the certain loss of his own hair. Yes, it makes me more confident about myself and uh, that I will lose my hair. <laughs> Barbara Shelby Heard lost a childhood friend to a rare bone cancer and says the event always helps her reflect. His name was Christopher and he did pass away. I'm sorry. And um, just being able to do something like this is awesome. It does come full circle, especially seeing the kids that are going through it. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't imagine. Even though it's not easy to voluntarily give up your hair, Scott Daniels hopes this stops one idea young patients face while fighting cancer. Hopefully it'll also show that the children that you're not defined by your hair. <laughs> In Macon, Nikhil Williams, WGXA News. Right. May I have your attention, please? Today, I wanted to observe and see if what we've been training and for and what these guys have been doing, I wanted to see it come together. Just wait right there. We got help coming, okay? Something Mike Tyson used to say back in the 90s, and that is everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. And uh, we have a plan, and uh, everybody knows our plan, and we've gone over our plan, but in a real life scenario, more likely than not, you're going to fall back on your um, highest level of training and your instincts. We never want this type of situation to happen, but of course we have to be practical and we have to ensure that we're taking the necessary procedures and steps to make sure that we minim minimalize any injuries and uh, fatalities. That's why we got to train to get better, to increase our level of training so we're ready, you know, in, in a worst case scenario.
owner of Flowers by Helen, David Ellis, says having his business burn Tuesday morning came as a shock. Almost in disbelief to some degree, we, uh, we experienced something similar to this about six years ago when the Gretz Cafe caught on fire and just never really expected it to hit home. I was way down the end of this street here, I seen these fire trucks, what was going on. Kevin Arbogast has been in the community for 18 years and says he was just a block away when he heard the sirens. Come up here, it's, uh, it's pretty bad, you know. Uh, this, this building up here went in flames. Neighboring business owner Curtis Jenkins of Hammond Jenkins Attorney at Law had soot on their walls from the fire. Jenkins says it's just a matter of time for all businesses to be back up and running because they have a strong sense of community. We all rely on one another and help one another. And uh, we've offered uh, in our office suites to, to uh, house their minimal operation, their offices, office needs for the flower shop temporarily while they find some other place. And I think there have been others that have offered that to them also at no charge. We're, we're all uh, one big family here and we try to work together and because what's good for one is good for all here in the, in the town. Ellis says the square will thrive again. We'll come back. I mean, it's, it's just going to give time. It's our intention to rebuild back in the same spot where it's always been. And just give it a little time and we'll be back, hopefully as good as it was before. <laughs> Meet Troy, the newest patient at Fort Valley State University's Veterinary Science Department and a game changer for veterinary technician majors like Kiara Kendricks. I really didn't think it was going to be like this good, but like this is every legit everything that we see when we're in class just like better. The lifelike synthetic dog isn't only better for students like Kendricks, but also a first. Fort Valley is the first and only school in Georgia to receive one. Assistant Professor Dr. Brandon Knight believes the new training aid puts the school a step ahead. We are uh, going to be able to use this endeavor to get the students a lot more hands-on opportunities, gain their confidence on a synthetic model before they move to the live animal model. Confidence in areas like intubation and endoscoping that will allow students to see a brighter path to their new careers. This is like a whole another level of even like looking at a video. We look at ACT videos all the time, but this is like, it's like a whole step. Mm -hmm. like towards our like future. Katie Thurber, WGXA News.